Hello, today I'm going to explore the tangle pattern called O. I developed this pattern a few years back while I was doodling on an envelope while on a telephone call, and it reminded me of the waves that you see in water, which is why I named it O, the French word for water. So I'm starting off as I typically do in Zen Tangles by drawing my corner dots and connecting them to create a border. I'm drawing a line down the middle, one to the left, and one to the right. Turning my tile, drawing a line down the middle, and one to the left, and one to the right, creating a grid pattern with my pencil. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my Micron pen. And every time there's a corner or an intersection, I'm going to draw a vertical inked in seed shape. Now, if you saw my tangle pattern listing um, on tanglepatterns.com, initially I had started out with dots or circles or orbs in these corners, but as I've been practicing this pattern, I've started to really like using a seed shape instead. It makes for a little bit of a cleaner finish. Here I'm drawing them vertical, and I'll turn my tile later. I'm just drawing them vertical because it feels more comfortable to me in my hand. But if it feels more comfortable to you to draw them horizontally, go ahead and do so. Whatever is best for you, you're the artist. I'll go ahead and speed this up a little bit. So I'll go ahead and turn my tile. From the second seed shape on the top row, I'm going to draw an S-like shape and another one, and then continue on this pattern across the top row. As I draw these S-like shapes, I like to use that take off and land technique that's always used in Zentangles, making sure that my S shapes connect with the points of those seed shapes. For the next row, I'm going to draw my S shapes in the opposite direction. And this is the first variation of this pattern. You can draw these S shapes in whichever direction you like, um, alternating, you know, which um, direction winds up being on top. So you can sort of play around with which one you decide to draw first, the S shape going towards the left or the S shape going towards the right. I'll go ahead and speed this up a little bit. So now we're going to draw another series of S shapes, this time going in the opposite direction and going behind that first set of S shapes. Still following the idea of takeoff and land from the seed shapes, but each time we reach the other S, we make pretend to go behind and then pick up on the other side. I'll go ahead and speed this up a little bit.
Now that's really the whole O pattern, but like any other good Zentangle pattern, um, the rest of it, the rest of the magic of this pattern really is the idea that you can decorate these shapes and embellish them in whatever way you like. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time just playing around with how can I decorate these different S shapes? And what kind of different effects can I get? I've decided I want my S shapes to sort of overlap, to go through each other. So I'm creating an inner aura for the S shape that was going behind. And I'm inking in that inner aura as if that first S shape that we drew is going through the second S shape, the one that was going behind originally. I don't know if you can hear it. There's a bird outside chirping. I love when nature is right at my window. Yeah, just like that. I'll continue on with this pattern with all of those S shapes that are going behind. So I'll go ahead and speed it up. For the other S shapes, I'm going to go ahead and start with a little orb and then expand it out into a spiral. I'm 
I'm just going to let that spiral continue to expand and fill in the entire S shape. Now, whenever I draw Prétain, which is that spiral pattern um, in Zentangles, I honestly don't think about what direction my spiral is going in. So I'm sure these different spirals on the S shapes wind up alternating in direction. It's not something I do um, deliberately. I just let my hand sort of do whatever it wants when it's creating these different Prétain or spiral um, patterns. As I'm drawing the, um, the aura lines for my spiral, I can really tell when I start to lose concentration um, because my aura line will wind up going over the edge of that original S pattern. So making sure to just draw very deliberately, deliberate strokes is one of those sayings they use in Zentangle patterns to help um, this drawing practice be more of a mindfulness practice. So making sure that I'm going nice and slow, taking my time, and making sure that my aura lines don't wind up going over that original S shape. I do wind up completing my aura lines going down one side and then down the other. Rather than alternating sides. So I'm going to fill in all of my S shapes just like this. So I'll go ahead and speed up the process.
so that's my drawing done. It's time for some shading. I'm going to shade along the right edge of each of these spiral S shapes. I'm also going to shade the inner edge and the outer edge. of the S shape that used to be going behind. And on those spiral shapes on the inside of the, the S shape, I'm going to put a little bit of graphite too. I continue this pattern of adding graphite to the right edge of the spiral S shape and the inner edge and the outside right edge of the S shape that went that used to go behind throughout the rest of the tile. So I'll go ahead and speed up this process. to blend with my tortillon. This is when all of the shading magic happens. I love the depth that shading gives. It's something that I had to, shading is something I had to practice for quite some time when I first started tangling before I got really comfortable with it. Um, I would either add too much and everything looked like a gray smudge or I wouldn't add enough and you, could, you couldn't hardly see any sort of um, depth, but I have gotten a little bit more comfortable with it over the years. It's one of those things you just sort of have to experiment with and find what you like. satisfied with that. I'll go ahead and add my chop in and then on the back of the tile I'm going to write the name of the pattern O 
and that it's variation number one. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you um, enjoyed this video and that you have some fun playing around with this pattern as well and just see, see what your take on this pattern is. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.